Hello and welcome back. So on the 10th of June 1688, a bouncing baby boy was born at St James's Palace, London. But as soon as this baby was born, rumours started going around that this baby was not who he seemed. But who was this baby? He was James Francis Edward Stuart, the son of King James II of England, 7th of Scotland, and Mary of Moderna. The rumours were that Mary had in fact given birth to a stillborn baby and that a substitute baby had been smuggled into the birthing chamber in a warming pan. But why were there rumours about the legitimacy of Prince James? It's all down to religion. Henry VIII was married to Catherine of Aragon and England was a Catholic country. But then Henry decided he wanted to divorce Catherine and marry Anne Boleyn. But the Pope wouldn't allow this, so Henry split from the church in Rome, making himself the head of the church in England. Now, Henry was still Catholic, but Protestantism had started creeping into the church. When Henry's son Edward came to the throne, the country went fully Protestant. But then Edward's sister Mary came to the throne. Mary was a Catholic and she moved England back to being a Catholic country, burning many heretics along the way. When Mary died, her sister Elizabeth came to the throne and England went back to being a Protestant country. Though Elizabeth did tolerate Catholics, but only if they were loyal to her and they kept their worship discreet. But this did not stop there being numerous Catholic plots on Elizabeth's life, one involving her cousin Mary Queen of Scots who was technically Elizabeth's heir. When Elizabeth died, Mary Queen of Scots' son King James VI of Scotland became King James I of England but unlike his mother he was not Catholic. He was a Presbyterian which is a reformed tradition in the Protestant faith specifically in Scotland. A few years after James came to the English throne there was a Catholic plot to kill him. The idea was to blow up the House of Lords while King James and Parliament were there for the state opening of Parliament. The idea was then to place James's nine-year-old daughter onto the throne making her a Catholic head of state. This plot was foiled, but it did make Parliament consider introducing anti-Catholic legis legislation. But in the end, James's reign was rather lenient for Catholics. James's son Charles was a Protestant, but after his execution and England becoming a republic, England's religion became that of Puritan. After the restoration of the monarchy with King Charles II in 1660, England went back to being a Protestant country, though King Charles did convert to the Catholic faith on his deathbed. He'd done this because he promised the French king, Louis XIV, that he would convert to being a Catholic and help France in his wars against the Dutch in return for subsidiaries from the French. Now, even though Charles had loads and loads of illegitimate children. He didn't have any legitimate children. So his, his heir was his brother, James, and James was unapologetically Catholic. Now, at the time, Catholics were viewed with suspicion, which is not surprising considering all the plots on people's lives there were going on. Um, people were not too keen on James becoming king, but at the time, his heirs were his two daughters from his first marriage, Mary and Anne, who on the orders of their uncle Charles had been raised in the Protestant faith. Now, a few years after his first wife died, James married his second wife, Mary of Moderna, who was Catholic. And then when James became king, Mary gave birth to a boy. Now the people knew that this baby would be raised a uh, Catholic and to, due to male primogeniture, he would go ahead of his half-sisters in line of succession. And this was when the rumours started. So Mary and James had been married for 10 years at this point and in this time Mary had had 10 pregnancies. But all these pregnancies have, had either ended in miscarriage, stillbirth or if the child had been born 
they had only lived to their early childhood. So when Mary fell pregnant with her 11th child, especially now that James was king, people were a bit suspicious. It was said that Mary's pregnancy was progressing too fast and people were suspicious at Mary's insistence that she was having a boy. Princess Anne, James II's daughter, wrote to her sister Mary saying that she wouldn't put it past the Catholics to trick the world into thinking the king and queen had produced a son via a changeling. When Mary went into labour, the court was surprised and then Mary gave birth to Prince James. Rumours went around that either Mary had not actually been pregnant but had faked her whole pregnancy and labour and a baby had been smuggled into the bedchamber in a warming pan to be presented as this child she had just given birth to. Or that Mary had given birth to a stillborn child and a live child had been smuggled in to replace him. Now Mary and James were shocked by these rumours and furiously denied them. James even summoned the Privy Council and got people who were witnessed to the birth to testify that the Queen had actually given birth to the young prince. The only problem with this though was that everyone who attended the birth was Catholic so they could have lied and said that yes she did give birth just so they could keep the country Catholic. But in reality, it would have actually been really difficult to smuggle a baby into the birthing chamber. This is because royal births weren't a private affair. They were literally a public affair where hundreds of people would be crowded into the bed chamber to witness the birth of a new royal. If Prince James was smuggled into the bed chamber then someone would have noticed and even if everyone was in on the deception then at some point someone would have blabbed. I personally feel that this is just a silly rumour just made up because people didn't want to have another Catholic king on the throne. But anyway what do you guys think? Do you think this could be true or is it just the rumour. Let me know below and if you enjoyed this video like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!